Okay, so to get the figures that we want to get, right, we want to put together our bar graphs that we picked up in the last lesson, and we want to put it together with the output files that we had in MATLAB. Okay, so I'm just going to open up MATLAB, grab 2017B, um, and set my path, all the good stuff that we're familiar with. And all I want to do is basically load in that grand average file that we had earlier, uh, extract or plot a topography map and some ERPs, and then we're going to work with that in, say, something like PowerPoint or, or some basic editor. Okay, so let's just open that up here. We're going to set our path like we normally do here. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay. Lab. So let's just remind ourselves we're loading in existing ERP set. We're taking our grand average one that we made before. Okay. Now we wanted to plot our scout maps. Now I'm going to do it pretty simply this time for just a two dimensional map. Okie doke. So let's do, I believe it was, what was our condition? of hits minus correct rejections. We just got to read through it and find it. Oop, there it is, 228. And we want to change our value to plot to mean amplitude between two fixed latencies. Our latencies in this case was 700 and 900, right? OK. Um, we're going to keep it at two dimensional. We're going to display, check the box to display our color scale map. Um, let's check our options and make sure um, well, we can include the bin description for now. Hit OK. And we'll do our, well, max min is fine. So we plot that. OK. So let's bring this up a little bit bigger. OK. So this is our effect, right? Now we are grabbing CP5, which is pretty much over here, which is might be one reason why we found in Excel that maybe that condition wasn't significant here. Right? Look, it's not, it's not the big spot where the effect is, which is actually over here. It looks like about, I don't know, F7 or so. Right? So maybe you go and you do a follow-up analysis at F7 now as an exploratory analysis based upon our visual inspection of the data. However, let's just stick with what we were doing. So we grab this. What you do is file, and you just save it as, and for now, let's just save it as really simply a JPEG. Now, if any of you guys have Photoshop, you can save it as a PDF. You can save it as a, a EPS. You can save it as a um, Illustrator file, all sorts of stuff. I'm just going to save it as a JPEG because it's easier for now. And we'll title this. Um, let's see here. Data. I'm going to title it our 2D topo. Oh, whoop. Come on. 2D topo map. And a little tip is to always include the information of the electrode, the conditions, and the time. Because you might have lots of figures when you're done with this, and they're, none of them are going to make sense unless you can remind yourself what it was that you got it from. So this was hits versus correct rejections, 700 to 900 milliseconds, and it was at CP5. Nope, uh, well, we don't need the electrode here for that one, actually. Um, save that. Now, the next thing we can do is create our ERP figure. Okay, so now we go to ERP Lab again. We plot our ERPs using ERP waveforms. Right, so now we're going to uncheck all bins. And I'm moving quick because I know that you guys have all done this before. We've, we've covered this a lot. So I'm um, just a review. And I remember that it's conditions for us, which is 82 and 139, but if you forgot, you can hit browse and you could find those bins of hits and correct rejections that you want to do. So that would be uh, 82 there, our old fours and fives, and 139 was our new item correct rejections. Um, we don't want to plot all channels, let's just keep it 1 to 32 for now. And you can baseline correct if you want to the pre stimulus period. Now for us, we want to plot essentially um, negative 200 to 1500 milliseconds. Uh, we can pre-stim this correct, that's fine. 
and let's hit plot. See these big, nice, beautiful plots. And what we want to do for our purposes right now is just grab that one site, correct? So let's, we were working with CP5, so if we click on that, it'll populate. Okay. Now here's a couple things we can do. Um, we can edit this. Now first of all, one thing we see is we have a bunch of white space up here. So let's adjust it. We don't need all this white space up here. We can see visually that it goes up to about, I don't know, about three mu volts here, right? And it goes down to about three. So let's replot that, knowing that information. Plot, and now we change our scale, which is our Y range down here. And we uncheck auto scale. And let's make it instead negative three to three. And let's plot those. And some of them won't see clearly, but what we want to do is see CP5. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that nicer? Okie doke. So what we can do here to edit this figure is click this button here. If you hover over it, it says show plot tools and dock figure. Okay. So now we, it allows us to start editing this. So it looks a little nicer for me if I put this legend down here. So let's do that. Now the thing that your readers won't care about is what these bin numbers are. So let's just delete those. And they also don't need to know it's new item one and two and old four and five, do they? Let's make this professional quality. And let's call it the information that it truly is, in this case, for, for publication, which is just hits and correct rejections. So let's just retype that as correct rejection. And I'll retype old four and five to say hits. OK, now doesn't that already look a lot nicer and cleaner? OK, let's, let's keep working on this, OK? Because it gives us a lot of nice tools to clean it up with. So for example, let's make our scales here a little bit bigger. If you click on the scale bar, OK, um, see how it highlights these different spots? And if we come back down here to our x-axis and do font, we can raise it from 8 to, let's say, I don't know, 14. See how much bigger that got? Let's do the same for our y-axis. So you click on the y-axis and go to font again, and let's make that 14 as well. Doesn't that look nicer? Yeah? OK. So let's make our legend here also a little bit bigger. Our font size, instead of 12.6, let's make it font size of 16. So that reads a little bit bigger than our um, legend, or our, our axes. Okie doke. And CP5, I don't know, why not make it bigger than 10 point font? Let's make it, I don't know, 14. So let's see here. Doesn't that make the figure a little bit nicer for us? OK, because remember, you want to publish this. You want to send this out to the world and say, this is my scientific discovery. And you want it to look as good as you do, and you guys look darn good. All right? So let's make it, keep it nice and tight. So anyways, let's see what we do here. So we have that. Now if you click this other button here that says Hide Plot Tools, it reverts it back to our regular figure. See how we came back to normal now? Now let's take and save this now in the same way that we saved the other one. So we name it, let's call it the ERP, and it's hits and correct rejections, and it's at electrode CP5. OK? So we have that there, and we save it. And it's a JPEG. OK, now let's open up PowerPoint. 
Grab blank presentation. Okay, we don't need any of this. Let's just do a new presentation. We can delete all of our stuff in there. And what we can do is let's add in our two figures. So let's go to insert pictures, navigate to where we saved our data, and let's insert those two. Okay, so we shrink these down a little bit. Okay. So we changed those fonts to be pretty big, right? But already, it looks like they're a little shrunken. So maybe that tells us when we make it, it's got to go bigger than those numbers we used. So a couple little nifty tricks, a couple life hacks here. You picking me up back there, Saul? Okay. So uh, we double click on this and hit crop. And we can kind of close out some of this white space. Makes our figure a little bit more tight. Okay. Now, look at this font here. Is that very helpful? Okay, so let's delete that. And let's come back to our figure. And let's do what we did again, right? So see, we just click this box to edit. Now we can grab that scale uh, uh, there. And we change our, let's see here, figure. We got to basically play around and find our information of our text. Okay. Properties. Ah, there we go. Gotta find our font. And you can kind of have to play around here and see what we can find. Um, but anyways, um, what you can do, so let's say, for example, right now, I can't find where the data is on the plot. Oh, there it is. You got to click your prop, plot browser. Oh, we don't need that. But now we can change the font from 9 to, let's make this font size 20. We also don't need the bin number, do we? So let's do that again. And you can edit that here in the title. And this is hits minus uh, correct. Rejection, so I'm typing down there. And it's from 700 to 900 milliseconds. OK, so see how that already just kind of simplified things? And let's grab our font size there, wherever that is. Um, oh, we want our Y, Z, no. Yes. Let's play around with what we got here. Ooh, you can add the electrodes, take them off. And let's close this then. All right? So now we've already updated this. And we might need, if we can't find out, let's say, how to figure out off the top of our heads how we change these values here immediately, then, uh, whoopsie, we might have to move that. Okay, so let's check this out. We get our text. How do we edit that? We might need to go, and sort our way out. Properties. Ooh, font size 18. Let's make it 28. Ah, look at that. Now we come back here. See how this is bigger font now? Now let's save it again and let's replace it 
Yes. We come back to PowerPoint. Let's insert that figure again. Now it's nice and big. Now what I'll do is, first of all, we can shrink it down. And notice that when we shrink it to make it a little smaller, that font is still not maybe so big. So first thing we got to do is we got to get rid of this white space. Now a little trick here is I will copy this figure and make two of them. Ready? I do control C, control V. Now we have two and you can start to crop this stuff. Just grab that, crop this one too. Boom. Boom. Okay, and now you can take this and merge it back and you can group them, which means you select both of them at the same time, right click, go to group together, and now they're one and you got rid of all that white space. Now this is here for the second one. And now let's come back to our bar graph, okay? You trick for this is to right click and copy it and create it as an actual JPEG figure. So for that, I open up paint, you paste that sucker in, and you can literally take it like that, go control A, control C, so that's select all and copy it. Come back to our PowerPoint slide, paste it there, shrink it to the extent that you need it. Okay, so now we have that format of the figure that we introduced. Does it look pretty clean? Now we spent a lot of time explaining how we got here, but it's actually pretty quick. You can imagine it zips pretty, pretty through pretty good. Now what you can do is if you need to increase this font, you could always do something like cropping that and deleting that or covering that up and just typing bigger text in front of it. Um, right now this could probably work as is. Now what we want to do now is now we want to trim up this figure. And let's add some bells and whistles. So for one thing, let's add a little box over, let's say, 700 to 900. Isn't that where we measured? So you hit that box, you put it right over the time frame. The fill, you don't want any fill. Our outline, let's make it dashed. So let's make it like that. You can bring it up right to where we were, okay? So that helps to clue your reader in. Now doesn't that make sense why it wasn't significant? Because this isn't actually where the action is. The action's happening a little earlier. So all this together, this work, helps us as scientists paint a better picture in our mind of what's really happening in the data so that we can go and, and explore it in the right ways and then communicate it to the public in the right ways and the scientific community. Okay? So what else can we do here? Let's tighten this up a little bit. We can bring this down yeah, just a little. Okay, so you can group this together as well. So hold the shift key down and select both of those. So now you'll make this one figure. You group that. Okay, so that's a little easier. What else can we do? Um, ooh, let's make a little circle to highlight where this is coming from. CP5. That's going to be central parietal um, oh, I don't know, where would that be? Uh, CP, maybe there. Okay. And you, again, no fill. But at least we can, uh, maybe the outline, maybe we can make it white or black. Black is good. So see how we were able to highlight the electrode that this data site is coming from? So let's group that together as well. Boom. And we got to do a couple other things here, right? We got to make our little panel indicators. So this is A. All right, so we copy that. Control C, Control V. Let's bring this up here. Let's call that B. Now let's paste this another one and make this one up here. Make that C.
so they're aligned. And what you could even do, if you were so inclined, is to create little dividers of the panels. Move these over a little bit. And you can even create a nice little setup. No fill. What do you think about that? Okay. Now let's say Control A, which highlights everything. You right click and it says save as picture. And let's change our format to a JPEG. And let's call this figure two, for example. Usually figure one is gonna be the figure in the paper of your, of your paradigm, of what you did in the experiment. And let's just call that figure two, put it in our folder, okay? Um, and you might even call it hits versus correct rejections 700 to 900 milliseconds or something, okay? So now, check it out. Let's say if we open up Microsoft Word. And we open up a new file. And this is our results section. Right? And you're typing, you know, oh, I'll tell you what. Copy that. Paste that sucker right in there, because that's what we were doing, right? Boom. Uh-oh. Correct re injections call it milliseconds okay and now you go to insert picture you go to your directory and look at that what do you think yeah it looks professional, it's nice. Now, you know, I think these are the default here. This color is probably blue. You probably want to make this black and this black and gray and gray. You don't want to get too colorful with all this other side stuff. I did that as just an example quickly for you guys. But that, I think, is pretty nice in both its elegance, but it's also simplicity. It's elegant in that it tells a rich story of the neurophysiological data for cognition, right? Its rich story goes from the whole scalp worth of a contrast to an individual electrodes representative comparison of those two conditions, physiology, and then actually quantifying that with some bar graphs showing the actual numbers of it. Now, uh, let's see here. Some notes. What else do we need to add here, right? Our bar graphs need to have what else? They need to have our asterisks if uh, comparison is signif significant. Um, we also need to have um, Oh, goodness. Maybe larger font size, right, for the topographic map, for the topo map. You also need a uh, scale legend for the color on the topo map. That is, you need to add that little symbol of mu volts, probably right around that zero point. Um, uh, what else? What else could be helpful? Oh, we should label our axes, right? Label ERP axes, which is going to be time and voltage. So time is our x axis and our y axis is going to be voltage. So these are things that you would go through when you made these figures, and you would actually make them better than what I'm making. Make sense? Okay. And let's just take a closer look. Um, uh, 
Maybe bump up the font sizes a little bit. Oh, and we need to also add our figure caption. Kind of like we talked about, right? Including describing panels A, B, C, etc. Right? So you're gonna have a little bit more work to do for that, right? You're gonna you're gonna describe the panel like we talked about when we walked through it with the marker. You follow? Okay. So yeah. Um pretty cool, huh? Yeah? So this is what's really cool about science, right? We talk a lot about when we were doing artifact rejections and stuff like that. It's more of an art than a science. This is where you bring art back into the story. This is where you get to be creative too. You get to make real art from scratch, right? And this is art that shows brain activity during conscious and non-conscious processing, during learning and remembering. To me, that's fascinating. Like, I, this is fun. That's cool. That's awesome. It blows my mind that we get to make turn the science into an art, or that is do art of the science. So it's always fun to do that. And this is going to be the end result then of that process from our loading in the data, right? Filtering it, downsampling it, applying events lists, bin lists, epicking the data, cleaning it up from artifacts, averaging it, apply a low pass filter, create a group file, right? We go through all these steps. We extract the data, we just get a list of numbers in a, in a text file. We open that up into, into Excel. In Excel, we create our little chart down here, right? We do our own little calculations. We do our analysis of, the, of our statistics, or we use statistics to do our analysis of the results. We write a summary of what those results reported. We visually describe that in this quantification graph, and we visually show it together with our topo maps, with our ERPs, and we plot all of that together into an actual manuscript session, or session, an actual manuscript section that fits into a scientific report. And that's the whole story. How's that sound? Okay, so I'm going to stop the screencast. Um, yeah.